Hey everyone, so today we're just going over a quick little thing about Parkour 2.0 and some changes that have me a little bit concerned. I know ultimately everything's going to be changed no matter what. Everyone kind of has it in their head. Everyone's ready to go. Work's already done on it by the looks of it from the dev stream. But I'm just here to raise some concerns and just give a few quick examples. Now, as we all know, coptering slash current parkour, it's an interesting mix because you can combine them to make some really quick, really fluid motions if you know how to control it. Now, these section of clips is just going to be a demonstration of how very easy it is to actually control where you land. Now, I hate those rolls, but I think those are still going to be there, according to the dev stream. Please remove those dumb rolls. But it's very easy to just pick a point you want to go and go to it. I've never had the issue where people get endlessly stuck to a wall or run up to the ceiling and can't get down or whatever it is they talk about. Like I've had that happen to me in all my hours playing maybe once or twice. And I really, really, really don't believe that Parkour 2.0 in its current state or at least what was demonstrated to us, will be anywhere near as fast. Which is deeply concerning for me. I love Warframe due to its speed. I love how with some skill, some sleight of hand, and a little bit of creativity, you can soar through the map. You can do, like, there's limitless speedrunning potential. And so much of it comes down to personal choice. What preference you have what you want to do, where you want to go, and how you do it. There are so many ways. And the current system, if used the right way, works just fine. Now, obviously, I was hyped for Parkour 2.0 for a long time, as I mentioned in my other videos. But it just didn't... I don't know, maybe it was the demonstration, but it just didn't seem like it's going to offer the mobility that people think it is. I think it's going to become a major handicap. Because here are some examples of just running through an area just with default Loki speed versus just coppering through it. Now, if they really think that it's going to be anywhere near as fast, go ahead and implement it. I'll judge for myself. Because later on, we're going to be doing some speed runs of boss kills. Now, a lot of people talk about the flip jump. And for the longest time, that's what I used. Before I got a decent coptering weapon, I just did this over and over and over. Now, for some reason, it doesn't work when I'm solo. It only works when someone's hosting, and I can pretty much always do it in the relays. Just being launched across the entire map with a flip jump. This is also going to be taken out, according to the dev stream. Which is interesting, because I don't get stuck with it. You can just bounce right off the wall. A literal wall bounce, if you will. Now, here's an example of running through Themisto and killing Alad V. It's far from a perfect speedrun. I make many mistakes. This is kind of lazy. But there's a huge issue that I want to bring up. See, here we are, trying to kill a boss, trying to farm resources. And if I remember right, I did this run in about a minute and 53 seconds, maybe a minute and 50, not counting that horrible stealth kill, which was probably the antithesis of anything sneaky. With coptering and with air melee launching, the way you look at the map, the way you handle movement, the way you perceive things, it's all different. Let me show Nothing you looks I like a flat surface. A Nothing fit. looks like a wall. You Everything seems like something you can shoot through, like a tunnel to, to funnel we'll yourself through. You. Or a nice little bouncy pad. Now, this part is just, uh, now. you know, obviously to do the boss run, you oh, have to have kill the boss, and it's far from perfect, because I reloaded again the wrong time. It's not very smart, so he gets revived. I have to kill him again, but this time I reload in the right time and kill the new The boom, two neural sensors. 
So a lot of people kill all of for sensors. I used to, I don't anymore. Destiny. Ironically, I don't need them anymore. I have many in stockpile and I usually only generation. use them for formas nowadays. But new players aren't that fortunate. I wasn't even that fortunate very few while ago. I I needed a lot of them and I used to do this and look at this. That was a minute and 53 seconds, minute for two neural sensors. Now that means a neural sensor per minute. That's a decent rate. You can kill LB that many times, that means 15 times in half an hour. Now, given various RNG, you're not expected to get neural sensors every drop. Maybe 20-30%. So within 30 minutes, if you kill him 15 times, assuming some give 2, some give 3, you can look at around 10 neural sensors. That's a good rate for 30 minutes alone killing a boss. Now, as I said, there are many ways to get around the map, and you can use the old parkour system. It's perfectly viable. I've used it many times. I used it a long time ago before I had a great coptering weapon such as the Taikido, and it's not that slow in comparison. You can do it. I made that jump no problem, but nothing compares to the half second it takes to just fly over it. This is another example of running through an area, imagining that stamina is limitless and Loki being a very fast frame, especially in comparison to Frost. You know, it's a, that's the widest comparison there is, but even this takes about 18 seconds. Versus... Five seconds at most of just coptering. Even lazily coptering, not even really jumping and spinning the way you should, and just kind of air meleeing. You can get across in half the time. If doing melee combos in the air, you can get across in less than three seconds. I doubt Parkour 2.0 will be able to do this. I just, I really don't think it can. So we're moving on to the last part when I was mentioning how you look at the map differently. Nothing looks quite like the same obstacle. This room, ever since I got the Taipito, I haven't handled it the same way ever again. I can scale up to the very top of the staircase in about 4 seconds. Now for normal players or people who don't like coptering or don't like melee motion, you can run up the stairs. Running up the stairs takes a significantly longer amount of time, about 5, 6, maybe 8 seconds, I would say 11 seconds with a slow frame. Now the way I usually handle this room, of course mistakes are always made, but even with that mistake, it is faster to correct yourself than do this double launch technique that I first started using a long time ago. Even that is faster than actually running all the way up, even with the mistake being made. Now. Without the mistake, it doesn't even take 4 seconds. The time difference is astounding. Even the final room just looks completely different. Anything that you would have to do normally, and also these enemies really got in my way for a second when I was trying to demonstrate, rolled through that just fine, but then I got caught up on an enemy trying to knock her out, so I decided to clear the room and make a better demonstration. This basically sums it up, because there are various coptering techniques to use, and many of them make the maps go that much faster. I'm not concerned about technique, I'm concerned about speed. Now, there's some more that's going to be brought up in a little bit about being a solo player. Because if you remove coptering, I'm just going to play Loki all the time and do this. However, everything that I've mentioned about parkour so far, or parkour 2.0, and whatever These various changes, the thing that absolutely concerns me most is going to be character solo potential. A lot of these missions are going to play entirely differently if we're not allowed to travel from one spot to the next in fast, rapid succession. Now, this is an interception mission. This is one of the key instances where mobility for a solo player, I'm talking about being alone, no team to watch your back, 
is vital. It is crazy important. And without it, your mission literally becomes impossible regardless of your skill level. There's nothing you can do. If you can't get to where you need to go in the fast time, the enemies will capture the towers. There's just... <laughs> that's it. The be-all, end-all to the entire conversation lies in that simple fact. Now, even with the ability to go as fast as we do, and the crazy amounts we do, getting from place to place and capturing these towers, at least in later levels, is not the easiest thing. So, see? Already. Already one gone. Now, I want to know how, without the ability to travel around the map at very high speeds, this is going to be considered possible. I don't think it is. Sometimes, you can do something to prevent them from capturing it if you have a very specific line of sight. But that's rare. Most maps don't offer you that. Now, despite capturing these constantly, I am still behind in the score. Now, I've soloed these waves to 10, 12-ish. It really depends on the AI and where they spawn and what they decide to go after, which is never a good thing. Randomness is not competitive. But you really have to beg the question, what are we going to do? Are we just going to have to say, hey, interception is not for solo players? Don't expect it to be possible. It barely is now. See, you can see that guy trying to hack. Usually you can stop them from hacking that from here. Maybe dodge over here really quick. One terminal clear. Other terminal clear. And it's possible to win this. See? Sometimes you get line of sight, sometimes you don't. And you can keep your little terminals protected to an extent. It's nice. But how are you supposed to capture the towers faster? Where was that guy? Oh, he was over there? Never mind. So this is one thing that's concerning me a lot, looking at, you know, I've, I've watched that video the so many times of them bouncing around captured. in Parkour 2.0 and just lackadaisically wall hopping we over and over again. And it's concerning as someone who does a lot of solo content, especially the higher end waves. I mean, look at this. This, <laughs> this map is awful for a solo player. It's taking me this long just to barely stay in the lead, tower. let alone get to wave 12. The enemy have taken a tower. You must recapture it. Now, will I finally get a 4 cap? That might be the case. Gotta keep an eye out. I think render distance, even though mine is all the way up, is still limiting me in some ways. Are you serious? No way. And there we go. Keep fighting. Now the little flyer's probably gonna capture that. Eh, I got him. And there we go. It's 92%, we're swiftly coming up on the end. But, you know, I'm gonna give one more example of trying to solo content. Reinforcements are in that. I just... I'm concerned. I wanna know how this we is gonna be possible to in any length of time. Eliminate the... And this is going to be a very quick example from Augustus, the Mars Intercept mission. We've seen this tile set before, examples like Viver, Viver, whatever it was on Eris, very popular one for a time. Now, you're here, you're playing the mission, you're solo, remember I don't have a team backing me up. So we go here, we capture one, 
Let's say I'm capturing this one. Let's pretend it's already captured. We're here. It's captured. I'm defending it. I'm shooting stuff. Now, over there, I see C. It's getting captured. Someone's on it. Well, what am I supposed to do other than get there as fast as possible, which takes a long time, even with this, and shoot the guy in the terminal? How am I supposed to do? Now, what if I have A, C, and D? But what if I don't have D and I need to capture that? Well, the way to do that is to go over here, jump up, and then start capturing it. Right? Without aerial melee launching, how is this supposed to be possible? Now, maybe there are ways. This tower maybe, is ours now. without taking up so much time, you can do some nice little parkour tricks and jump about. Finally reach here and get up, shoot the guy the Maybe. We have lost I'm not saying it's going to be impossible here. I'm just going to be saying... You really got to think about this stuff. Is it going to be possible? I don't know. I've never tried it. Tower captured. Beginning stream to but I just, now. I really don't see how you're supposed to go from A to C in the time it takes them to hack the terminal. Hey, it's, it's hard enough to go from A to B and shoot the guy off the terminals. And get back to A and time to capture it. Now, when copter is finally removed, is anyone gonna be able to defend these points all by themselves all at once? Hey, look at that. B is already getting hacked again. It's gonna be done before I can even capture this myself. And A too. I don't know. It's a lot tower. to think about. It's a lot of possibilities. Now let's see if I can get over tower there. Nope, lost. I can't even make it to A. Without coptering, how is this supposed to be possible? This example, I'm just going to tackle two quick issues. How many people have solo defense to very high waves? Do any of you know what it's like when you either spam energy restores? It's like, look, I'm out of energy. What am I going to do? Oh, you have to go kill some bad guys. You have to run out here, you have to stab them. Now, of course, I would be shooting here. I just decided not to bring an actual gun with me for this demonstration. It's like, what do you want Frost to do? Frost is incredibly slow. Look at this. He's pathetically slow. Is anyone considering the fact that removing copying is going to be an indirect nerf to most of these frames? It's nice for the frames that are already quick, that are already nimble. But what are we going to do with Frost? You know? Now, obviously, this is already in everyone's head that it's going to be removed, and a lot of people are supporting it. I just want to make sure that people know what they're supporting. Are you willing to support an indirect nerf to Frost and most other frames? How many times, if you do defense solo very often, are you running low on ammo, running low on energy? You know, just in general, maybe even low on health. And you see over there, oh look, ammo, an orb or something. You go over here, you grab it, copter back, and you come back in time to defend. Without the coptering, what are you going to do? By the time you run over here, all the way, pick up some ammo, and then all the way back, now you have five butchers hacking away. It's not going to be good. 